Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide, and I do these videos for my students. And uh, we did have a question um, about our uh, remote access, and we set up this little remote access lab over here in one of the other labs, and we uh, did the Forta client, and we got it working and everything like that. And, uh, you know, I really did not take the time to explain the importance of NAT transversal. Now, when we set up the um, when we set up the VPN tunnel using the wizard, it turned NAT transversal on, so it enabled it. And the reason why NAT T or NAT transversal is so important is because uh, normal IPsec breaks NATing because there is absolutely no port numbers for it to, to NAT onto. All right. So uh, once NAT is detected, it does a switch over from uh, the ESP header to a little UDP 4500. And that way NAT has something to grab onto. Anyways, um, just kind of wanted to, to demonstrate that here. So let's go ahead and uh, log into our Windows machine. All right. And this is our remote PC somewhere. And we're going to remote back into the uh, into the office. So, and this video will be relatively short, guys. I just wanted to kind of just take a couple of minutes to dig into that a little bit deeper. So let's let it have that load up. And by the way, I did fix the 40 doc credentials. Oh, it didn't work in the last video because I forgot to to add him to the right security group, but he should be working now. So here we go. So two headquarters, and we can say uh, 40 duck and 40 ducks magic password here, and let's go ahead and connect. And it does take a, a little bit to establish that tunnel, but once it's established, right, we do have a natted device in between our. Uh, client and also the the FortiGate over here in headquarters so uh nat t should be detected during that phase one and then it should kick in for our phase two and our transport so um there we go all right so it is connected and let's go ahead and just open up a command prompt here and let's just ping something through the tunnel maybe there we go cmd I said CMD. Is it just really slow? Probably as slow as my mind's going right now. All right. <laughs> Always record these too late. Here we go. So here's a command prompt, and I'm just going to kind of throw a uh, uh, ping loop up there. So let's ping 10.10.10. .10 .10, oh, 1.10. That should be our domain controller through the VPN tunnel. And there you guys go. So it's traversing our, our VPN network. So, um, So obviously, you know, uh, to get out to the internet, uh, it's going to have to traverse the internet. And uh, let's go ahead and see what it looks like uh, before and after the tunnel. So I'm going to first sniff right here between our somewhere PC and before the natting. All right. And as you guys will see here, we should see our, our ESP header have a little cushion there. All right. Now on the on the FortiGate, okay, it does have um let's see here. It does have ESP listed as the protocol, but if we go ahead and we stop this packet capture and we really look down at the protocol stack, this is the encapsulating security payload. And the and it does have a sequence number and also it SPI, and that's how the FortiGate makes sense of where that belongs to, what phase two it belongs to, and essentially kind of acts like a port number in the sense of it matches up the, the sequences, okay? So, but because NAT was detected, as you guys can see here, we now have a, a UDP header that is before the ESP header. So that's exactly what NAT transversal does. Okay. Uh, if we don't have NATing, uh, we can essentially encapsulate it right after the IP header. And uh, let's see if that works. So, but guys, that's exactly what NAT transversal does. It just simply adds a UDP um, uh, encapsulation layer there for NAT to grab onto. All right. So, now, if we go ahead and we, uh, let's go ahead and unplug this bad boy. So I'm going to disconnect from the, the tunnel here. Bloop. 
All right. And by the magic of GNS3, let's stop that packet capture. And let's see if the FortiGate goes ahead and doesn't use NAT transversal if we're using just a public IP address. That's going to be our goal here next. So if I go ahead and I'll delete this connection, and I will go ahead and plug it into our non-NATed switch. And we set up this topology in an earlier video on the playlist. There we go. Bloop. And now I'm going to give it a quote-unquote public IP address. We're going to make believe that 10.200.5 is public. So here we are. We are going to, yeah, look at that right away. Oh, it's all dead. Okay. So let's go down here. And let's go ahead and set that static because right now it's for DHCP. And then we'll spin up the tunnel and we'll see where it's doing the encapsulation. So, all right, uh, here we go. Ethernet, change adapter options. Good old Windows 10s running like molasses in my virtual environment. All right. And let's go ahead and set that static IP address. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn, turn off DHCP, and we will give it an IP address of 10.200.5.25. I just pulled something out of my, my nose. All right. And it is a slash 24. And we're going to pass it off to that Linux router that's acting like our WAN cloud. So here we are, 5, and it's 254. And we'll just make up some kind of DNS. 8.8.8.8. Thank you, Google. We'll hit OK. We'll say close. And just to make sure that this is working, I'm just going to ping out to just the internet itself. So ping google.com. All right, there we go. So, uh, but technically, there's nothing natting between this remote machine now. All right. And our FortiGate. So when we build up that tunnel, it technically shouldn't need trans transversal that transversal so um let's go ahead and do it so let's pull out our forty client which is already up good old 40 duck it's gonna log in it's gonna establish the tunnel and then we'll put back up that ping loop and see if it kicked on that transversal or not so all right here we go so we're making it through the tunnel Okay, but now let's go ahead and sniff the packets. All right, so let's do a packet capture. We'll let it collect some packets here, then we'll hit stop. All right, so as you guys can see, because NAT was not detected, we have layer three, and then right after layer three, the network layer, it goes right into the ESP, the encapsulating security payload. And as you can see here, there is no port numbers. There's no UDP 4500 because it doesn't need it. All right. So once again, guys, uh, VPN IPsec breaks NAT natively, and that's why NAT transversal has to be turned on. Now, when you're creating those VPN tunnels, let's just go over here to our... Uh, remote PC. All right. Come on, buddy. Oh, of course I'm not logged in. I lied. Let's go to our Linux box. All right. Now, if we come down here to our VPN tunnels and we open up this bad boy, we created the wizard to make this all happen. All right. So, but if we convert it to a custom tunnel here and look at all of the options, okay. Uh, NAD transversal is going to be buried somewhere in here. All right. So, NAT transversal enable. And that simply means if NAT is detected, it's going to go ahead and switch over from the ESP header to the 4500. All right. It also does that for the, the ISA camp negotiation. So um, the phase one. Now, you guys can select it to force, and no matter what, it will use uh, NAT transversal just in case. And I've had people take my class tell me, hey, you know what? We leave that on forced just to be safe. Because if there's kind of weird like carrier natting going on or something that might be breaking it, right? Uh, it never hurts to use that 4500. So um, 
But guys, that is simply what NAT transversal does, and it's done kind of automatically. So just as long as you have it turned on. So um, anyways, guys, I just wanted to do that quick little explanation of what NAT transversal does for us. And as you can see, it's something that just kind of automatically happens if you have it selected, all right? And there's really not much configuration after that. And I do suggest if you do have remote clients and you're not doing like a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel, why not just turn it on, all right? That way you don't have to troubleshoot later on why it might not be uh, building up your phase, your phase one or your phase two. So anyways, like I said, guys, that's a very short video. I just kind of wanted to go in with what NAT transversal was for us. Um, I'm sorry it's taking me so long to record these, by the way. I I only record them about once or twice a, a month. So, um, anyways, but in my next video, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> we'll do something. And uh, for those that I made this for, I hope you found that helpful. And for the rest of you guys, uh, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Till next time.